بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وصلي على رسول الكريم إن شاء الله in my next few lectures where I will be talking about the current situation I want to look at it from a Quranic and psycho or Quranic and psychological perspective particularly the psychology of imperialism the psychology of colonialism and the psychology of apartheid or Zionism all of these whether it's the black people in the ghettos of America or whether it's the people of Gaza. What is the Quran saying about the mentality of the oppressor? And even if the whole world is like looking at them like you are definitely wrong, what you are doing, they don't, what is their mentality? So this is what we're going to look at today. And we're going to look at a few things. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ Fir'aun made himself high in the world. وَجَعَلَ أَحْلَهَا شِيعًا And he made its people into different groups. يَسْتَدْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ In order to weaken and oppress and suppress a group of them. وَمِنْهُمْ uh, وَمِنْهُمْ يُذَبِّهُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ And amongst them, there were those that they slaughtered their boys. And they let their women live. Indeed, he was a great person of fasad. Now, this is what Fir'aun does, right? But Fir'aun comes with his own morality, which I'm not going to talk about that right now. But I do want to talk about that when, you, when we are in the same land, when we're in the same space, and my space is dirty and it has crime and people are poor and people are weak and then you have a space nearby and you have the tall buildings of Tel Aviv or you have the tall buildings of downtown and you have all your luxury and you have everything even though you're in the same adjacent space as me and you then use your money to oppress the people nearby you okay when this is happening what happens? What happens? Do you think Fir'aun with all his might and with all the slave and the servitude that they put Bani Israel, Fir'aun, he divided them, he weakened them, he created uh, aristocrats of, of, you know, he used Bani Israel against Bani Israel. He got spies from within. He got his agents from within Bani Israel. Do you think that doing any of that as they thought will be able to the break the will of the people? You kill their children, you let their boys go, you use their women. And after all that, were you able to break their spirit? No. You see, and this is exactly what the, the, the people that who think they are superior then the others, they think that we will just break their spirit. We will break their back. We will, if they don't comply to us, then they will be destroyed. So this is, now let's understand this from another group of verses that are very interesting in this subject. So let me start from, and I'm only going to point out portions of this. Fir'aun said, Qala, if you took authorities other than me, if you took gods other than me, I will make you a prisoner. Like what's happening in Gaza. Who is the person that threatens people to put them in prison and then puts them in the world's biggest prison? And what's happening with the blacks of America is one third of them are put in prison. This is the Fir'aun, this is the Judeo-Christian civilization's elite, this is what they're doing. And the whole world is waking up and saying, wait, this is wrong. The whole United Nations is saying, this is wrong. And they don't see it, because they're in their mentality. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about that, uh, let me show you now what's going to happen. Uh, what does Fir'aun say? فَلَمَّا جَاءَ السَّحْرَةُ When he brought his magicians, his intellectuals, his workers, you know, the ones that do the magic for him, make things happen for him. قَالُوا لِفِرْعَوْنَ They said to Fir'aun, 
Okay? You know, inna lana la ajran. Will we get a reward? Like, they're all in it for their own interest. Inna lana ajran, inna kunna, in kunna nahnu ghalibin. If we are winners, you know, and we destroy the Musa and his people, and we defeat Musa in this, this magic, then what? Then will we get a reward? Right? That's how they are with each other. They're in it for, uh, they're in it for the, uh, the money. They're in it for their own benefit. And so, now let me show you this part. So now, when, uh, Fir'aun is defeated, okay, and, and when Fir'aun is defeated, what happens? <inaudible> Who are these people? They're just a band, a small band of nobodies. And this is the thing that Fir'aun feared Musa. And he feared the people being with Musa. And yet he is saying in his mind, Oh, who are there? Nobody. Hamas, Hamas is nothing. Who cares about Hamas? They're just a small group of evil people. But yet you bring the entire force. Right? If they're nobody, you're bringing the entire force against them. Right? In ha'ula'i la shirim dhimatun qalilun. Right? These are just a small group of people. And right before that, he says, uh, and then Fir'aun says, You believe in him? You believe in these group of people? You're going to be with these people before I gave you permission? Right? And then he says to the magicians who lost and accepted Musa, and they said, Musa is definitely a prophet of Allah because what he's doing is not magic. He said, no, he's your biggest magician teacher. Right? I will cut off your hands and your feet from opposite sides. Meaning like if they cut off the right hand, then the left feet. Okay? And I will crucify all of you. This is, this is Fir'aun's language. Now tell me, what is the language of Netanyahu and his, his, uh, the language of Netanyahu and his cabinet? What is the language of the right wing? We'll take care of you. We'll show you. We'll put you in jail. We'll bring you to our courts and we will do this and we won't stop till we finish Hamas and we're going to teach them a lesson. It's this exact same psychology. It's the psychology of that you believe you can break them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that no, you can, you cannot. In fact, uh, I forget the name of the psychologist. There was a very famous psychologist who, when he studied oppression and colonialism, he said in his observation that the harder you come down on a people with your colonial power or your imperial power, the harder they will resist. The harder they will find ways to resist. And this is what Palestine is. Palestine is the harder Israel comes down, the more the world wakes up, the more that they resist. And not only are the People of Palestine, look, when they first gave Israel to, uh, the, to the Jews in 1948, the Muslims didn't fight at that time because they were really weak. But today, Muslims know how to fight. Muslims of Palestine know how to fight. They know how to stand up for themselves. They are more, they have more humanity. You see, what happens is when the oppressor oppresses you, and tries to take away your humanity. The people, in order to feel healed, in order to feel whole, they're going to try to take back their humanity. And how do they do that? How do they heal themselves? How do they heal themselves out of their oppression? They heal themselves out of their oppression by taking back their humanity, by standing up as resistance, to saying, no, you cannot do this to us. And he's saying, yes, I can do this to you. And they're saying, no, you can't do this to us. And they, in this imbalance that is created by the oppressors, right? In this imbalance that's created by the oppressors, Allah is saying the oppressor is going to win because he will be getting resistance. He will be, he will, it's like working your muscle. They get used to it. You are the one in luxury. You're the one not used to it. You're the one who doesn't want it. You're the one who can't take it. And so the people of Palestine are standing up to take back their humanity. But it's not just Palestine. 
It's now the whole world. The whole world is seeing, look at what our politicians are doing. Look at what our elite are doing. Right? The whole United Nations is saying one thing. And then the elite of the elite in the United Nations, the Security Council, for example. Then they're, they, they're doing what they want. The, I think it was the, one of the ministers of Israel that went to the United Nations the other day and just uh, shredded the United Nations bylaws the constitution of the united nations this is how he makes a mockery of the whole world and the whole world is seeing what nonsense is this but the world is now the whole world feels that we're up against a resistance not just in gaza but all the elites of the world supporting gaza because they're all of the same mentality that if you're not with us, we will break your backs. And this is what's happening in across America in the colleges. What are they trying to do? They're trying to break their will. You can't break their will. The harder you come down, the stronger the resistance is going to be. And so Gaza is teaching the humanity today that you have the same problem that we have. You have the same problem that we have. The same problem of oppressors being on us and doing whatever they want and they have one group one they have one set of laws for themselves and another set of laws for the rest of humanity when they do this when they do this then now when now humanity is waking up and beginning to see and so when imam mahdi alayhi salatu wassalam comes when he comes he's going to have the support of the world that is against the elite. It won't just be Muslims. Even non-Muslims will support him. Just like non-Muslims are supporting Hamas today. They're supporting the Aqsa Brigade today. Non-Muslims are standing up for the right of resistance. The right to fight against oppression. And so in the time of Imam Mahdi, you will see this happen in its fullest and its brightest form where the night and day will be separated. But the people on one side will be the people of city and technology and the people of oppression and the people of their, their self-interests. And on the other side will be a people who stand up and believe in the truth. And that truth will be so clear at that time. And so, unfortunately, Zionism has hijacked uh, Judaism. And now it has become a monster and everybody is seeing this monster uh, affect the whole world and this monster is not going to like this this monster is going to create facade everywhere this zionism is going to create facade everywhere it's going to take revenge on everyone it's going to say oh you don't like me then see what i do to you and this is where now the world is headed because when israel against the world I mean, that day has come, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, that day has come which we never could have imagined would ever come. The day has come that the whole world is against Zionism, against the apartheid state of Israel. Could you have thought of this 10 years ago? How Allah does things are completely wondrous and marvelous and amazing. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things in such a phenomenal way, in such a perfect way, in such a beautiful way, that even we learn, wow, Allah can do this, that Allah is doing this, and that Allah, that there's nothing outside the plan of Allah. You know, so, and, and those who think that they can somehow leave Allah or defeat Allah's plan, who do they think they are? And so today, the whole world, look at what happens in the United Nations, I think, yesterday and today. Look at it. Look at what Malaysia said, right? And Israel is so desperate that it is shredding the United Nations Constitution and saying shame on the United Nations. So it's the world against Israel. And its uh, mother, America, is supporting it. But even America, Israel, America has a big problem now. America has a very big problem. You see, Netanyahu has to decide who's going to make happy. The right wing that votes for him or Biden. Who's he going to make happy? 
Is it going to make Biden happy, or is it going to make his right-wing people that vote for him happy? And he's made his choice for many reasons, even for his self-interest of not being made. Because the day the war stops, it is the end of his life. It is the end of his political career. And maybe he'll be thrown into jail, and who knows what will happen. But Allah has now shown, Allah has now shown to the world, and through Palestine, through Sham, Allah has shown to the world that, look, this is this is evil what is happening in palestine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown this but the evils people are stubborn and they are persistent and they're not going to stop but their attitude is we will crush these people we will crush the student colleges the students the cream of the crop the most intelligent people in america you're throwing them and you're you're like trying to like break them like are you like doing this to your own nation have you gone mad Right? And so America, unfortunately, is in the fingers of Israel. And so let's see what Allah allows to happen. But because America is in the fingers of Israel, and because Israel has its own agenda, and behind that Dajjal has his own agenda, we will now see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plays out the cards for them. But one thing is very clear. What Allah said came true. And that is humiliation and degradation is written upon them wherever they may be. And so now anti-Semitism is going to come and bite them because this using the iron fist and uh, getting American politicians to squash uh, the will of the people by force is not going to make the matter go away. It's going to increase the resistance. It's going to increase the negative feelings. It's going to increase anti-Zionism. And via anti-Zionism, it will increase anti-Semitism. Because the Jews have made a mistake of combining Judaism into Zionism. And this is the big mistake because Zionism does not speak for Judaism. And Judaism, for the most part, in its original sense, is against Zionism, has always been against Zionism in its own history. And so now they are changing religion to their own political benefits. And so Zionism is a religious idea, but they don't care about any of the other religious ideas. They don't care about the idea where the Bible says that if you save, if you kill one human, it's like you killed all humans. And if you save one human, it's like you saved all human beings. No care for civilians. They follow the law of Talmud and Zohar and Kabbalah, and they have left the Book of Allah, Tawrat. Even what is remaining of it, they have left. So, this is a crime after crime, and a crime against humanity, a crime against Allah. And so this is not going anywhere anytime soon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make an example of this. And so the harder they come and crush the people, the the Zionist Christians and the Zionist Jews are fighting a losing battle. Yes, they have all the technology and all the power and all the military and all the laws and all the everything, all the influence, everything. But humanity is waking up and is beginning to see the reality and is beginning to... And what Allah says, ضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ ذُلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ أَيْنَ مَا ثُقِفُ We've heaped degradation and humiliation quote-unquote, anti-Semitism, wherever they are. Except in two cases. إِلَّا بِحَبْلِ مِنَ اللَّهِ Except that if Allah gives you a life rope by His Qur'an, something you allow, you follow the, something, a rule, a divine rule in Qur'an that will give you a space. For example, if they live in under the Khilafah and they pay the jizya, for example, so then they're safe. They've always been in Muslim lands. And when they were in European lands, they were kicked out. The same thing. Humiliation is written upon you wherever you may be. And that humiliation is now coming to them in America. And it is only a matter of time before they will have to run to Israel. And it won't happen before they try to destroy America completely. And then make Israel the next superpower. But or by the rope of the people. And the rope of the people is United Nations in today's world. And the rope of the people, the international law, when you start breaking that, and you don't care about the Book of Allah, 
And then you don't care about even what human, the, the standard of normal human beings. When you don't care about that, then Allah said, we will bring anti-Semitism to back your bite, back, bite back to you. To come and, you know, you reap what you sow. And so, anti-Semitism, Zionism, and, and, and what this Zionist project is doing, it's waking up humanity. It is, waking up humanity to the truth. And this is a historical moment where something has happened we never thought would happen. We couldn't have ever, as Muslim scholars and preachers, we could have never brought a situation like this where the whole world will stand up and say, wait, Zionism is wrong. It's apartheid. It is wrong. It is imperialism. We never thought such a situation would come. And the Qur'an tells us that the more you try to crush humanity, the more you will try to oppress, suppress, and, and try to force people, the stronger the resistance will become. And trust me, you, they haven't even begun oppressing people yet. You will see many, 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 many worse days than what is happening in the college campuses yet. And with time, it will become more clear than it is even today. So with that, I will say this, 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 I will say this,